All right, so in the first three examples, we have now found the derivative of lines and power functions. And so now we can just use what we've learned. Now I should mention that really all you need is a power rule. Now k, the function, a constant function, is essentially a power function, right? Because it's kx to the zero power, okay? Right, because anything to the zero power is one, so this is just one. Um, so it's a special case of the power function, uh, of a power, yeah, of a power function. And then the same way with a line, right? Because this is essentially mx to the one plus bx to the zero, right? So these are just power functions. Um, so really all you need is a power rule um, in the end, right? You don't actually need, but it's good to reason out. <laughs> the, yeah, if you have a line, the slope of the line is the derivative, right? So, but now that we have these rules, we can just use them. We can use them to solve some problems. And that, that's what we're gonna do in this, in this video. All right, so this first example, is just a constant, right? Now, um, so we know the rule. Um, for the constant, right? If it's a constant, we just get zero, all right? It's just a horizontal line. Now, here, this is another line. Now, this is a line with a slope of one and a y-intercept of b of, of, of zero, right? But we can also treat this like x to the one, and then you could use the power rule on it, right? So, um, f prime of x, if I wanna use the power rule on it, I can just say, okay, it's n, which is one, times x to the n minus one. One minus one is zero, right? So I essentially get x to the zero and any anything to the zero power is one, okay? Or we could have used, you know, the fact that it's a line with a slope of one, so. All right, now we get our first real power function here. It's not a line, right? So again, we're just gonna apply the power rule. In this case, our n, Right, our n is five, and so we're gonna bring down five x to the five minus one. Five minus one is four. Boom, done. All right, now feel free to pause the video and do these on your own if you uh, don't wanna watch me go through all of these, because um, I'm, I'm sure you can do it. This, is, this one's pretty straightforward again. Our, in this case, our n, our power is eight, so it's just eight x to the seventh. All right, or actually, you know, I should probably, because it's called y and not f of x, it's, I can just say, um, I could write this as in with the Leibniz, Leibniz notation, you know, because we didn't, technically we don't have, unless we call this f of x. Um, I can write this as dy dx if we don't want to define that x to the eighth as a power of x, um, as, a, as, a, as a f of x. So, all right, so those are pretty straightforward. Now they get a little more difficult because sometimes you get power functions that don't necessarily look like power functions, right? So this next one, this next one. Now, um, now I should mention that that, even though we didn't prove it for, we did not prove the power rule for um, anything but really integer uh, powers, it works for any power, all right? So we're just not gonna go through the proof of that. <laughs> so, all right, now, it, this is a power function, even though it doesn't look like it, because I can write this as x to the one half power, right? X to the one half power, that is, oops, x to the one half power, that's the same thing as the square root of x, and I can still apply the power rule on it. So g prime of x, again, I'm just gonna bring down the power, one half, and then I'm gonna subtract one. Right, so I'm take one half minus one, right, or two halves. One half minus two halves is, is gonna be a negative one half, okay? So this is just fine, you can leave it that way. If you wanna simplify it a little bit, if you consider it simplification, um, the negative power would flip it, right? It would put the x to the one half in the denominator and and the one half power is the square root, right? So I can write this as one over two square root of x, two square root of x, oh goodness. Two square root of x, one over two square root of x, okay? Now that's another way to, to, to that's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. 
Um, so, and I made a note here that, you know, it, it could be helpful to memorize this one. You don't have to though, because we have the power rule. So as long as you know how, you know, if, as long as you know that the square root is a one half power, um, you can always reason it out from the power rule. Okay. But some people memorize this, this, uh, the, the D, uh, dx of the square root of x is this, all right? I personally, whoops, <laughs> I personally try to memorize as little as possible with mathematics. That's the beauty of mathematics is that you don't have to memorize. It's all based on reason, and I don't want to memorize any more than I have to. <laughs> so I don't bother doing it this way. I just use, I just change it to a power function. Square, whenever I see a square root, I change it to x to the one half and use a power rule on it. So. Okay, now this is another one. It doesn't look like a power function, right? It's one over x. So, but we can change it into a power function by making it, um, oops, uh, <laughs> x to the negative one power, right? x to the negative one power is one over x. So h prime of x is equal to, again, bring down the power, minus one, minus one, x to the minus two. All right. That's fine. You can leave it that way. Um, you can also write it as a negative one, negative one over x squared, right? Um, again, I I don't bother. I just change everything to a power function. I don't bother mem trying to memorize these other things. <laughs> so you could write it that way, but that um, but uh, it's just it's just fine if you want to leave a negative power, the negative negative two power. So. Um, all right, let's go to the next one here. Um, I should mention too that it's a good idea to always label your derivatives, right? You notice I'm writing g prime of x is equal to this and h prime of x is equal to this, all right? I'm late because it's a new function. It's not the same as the original function. If so, if you don't label it as a different function now, sometimes you get yourself confused, especially when we start doing application problems and you're taking derivatives and uh, then you kind of lose track of, okay, what was the original function and what was the derivative and what's the second? Okay, we're going to learn about second derivatives and stuff like that too. So label it, label it, label it. It's a different function. All right, and, and it also when you do when you're doing a rewrite when you like in this case this is a power function because um, this is x squared to the one third power right this the cube root is a one third power and we can actually write that as x to the two thirds right we multiply the powers when we take the power to a power. We multiply the power so we get two times a third, which is two thirds. Okay, so we had to do a read write first. So I started to say that um, it's good to make sure you separate the rewrite from the actual derivative, because that's another thing where people get confused. They have to rewrite the function and then they, have I taken the derivative or was I just doing the rewrite? Okay, right now we're just rewriting the function as a power function. And now we're ready to take the derivative because it looks like a power function. And so we can just bring down the power, which is two thirds. And then we're going to subtract one from two thirds. So two thirds minus one, two thirds minus three thirds is a negative one third. Okay. And I'm just going to leave it that way, right? I could do, you know, what I did up here and you know, rewrite it as two over three cube root of three or sorry cube root of x but um there's no need to do that <laughs> so all right so here we have the quotient of two things now we have not used learned the quotient rule yet there's something called the quotient rule and it's not what you think you can't just take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the de denominator that does not 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 that does not work okay that does not work there's a whole thing a co quotient rule which you're going to learn but um, I'm just gonna I had I'm gonna rewrite this as a power um, as a quotient of power functions. So this is t to the one, and then I I know that when I have the same base, I can subtract the powers, right? So um, one half minus one gives me a negative one half. So this function square root of x or square root of t over t is equivalent to um, t to the negative one half or one over square root of t but i'm going to leave it that way because i want it to be a power function so that i can now take the derivative of it k prime of t is equal to bring down the power right one half 
negative one half, and then I have to subtract one. So t, um, I'm going to subtract one. So negative one half minus two halves gives me a negative three halves. All right. I have to have a common denominator to subtract. So negative one half minus one is the same as negative one half minus two halves. All right. And I'm just going to leave it that way. That's perfect. Just leave it that way. All right. So um, I will meet you in the next video for more, more derivatives.